Hello, and welcome to the Shetland Islands. Now, after the super busy time I had down in the mainland part of Scotland, it was time for me to come north for a bit and just walk around here and explore. There's a bit of peace and serenity and rejuvenation I find in the north. Even though winter, and even though the sun takes forever to rise, which you'll see in a bit, and forever to set, nearly creating a day of almost no sunrise or sunset. I've lived here for quite a while, and it's just such a magical adventure every time I see it. If you don't know where the Shetland Islands is, it's about a 90 minute propeller airplane ride north of Scotland. Sitting just above the 60th parallel, with a population of just 20,000 residents, I knew this would be the perfect location for me for two things. One, do some art, which you'll see a bonus video post later this week, and chill out, do some hiking, journaling, writing, and just watch the sea. There's something peaceful and meditative about watching the tide roll in and roll out while listening to a podcast or writing poetry or while watching the clouds float in the sky. And up here, I think the people have been doing that for many years. Like many other towns that don't have a strong technological background, the Shetland Islands is depopulating as most of the residents want to live further south where the universities and larger companies are. That said, the people who live in the Shetland Islands are absolutely charming, welcoming, and it houses some of the oldest archaeology in all of Scotland. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to stare at the sea at the nature that has fought so hard for so many thousands of years. Back in the first century, the Romans wrote about overtaking this place. Yes, the Roman Empire went this far north, but before them, it's estimated that settlements date back to the Mesolithic period, around 15,000 BC, if not before. More recently, Shetland Islands was the center of a bunch of war bases in both World War I and World War II, and other wars. Today, many of the bunkers still stand, being home to some other vagabonds and artists, and going to visit this location was absolutely breathtaking. If you go to these places, make sure you have some decent shoes, as there's a bunch of rusty metal bits, broken glass from parties that had one too many drinks, and who knows what other sharp objects are around here. These bunkers were the home, the hiding place, the resting place of soldiers who were fighting for the ego of someone else. With the current turmoil in our world, I think it's crucial that we visit these places to remember that life is too short to squabble about such things. There is plenty of room in the world. If we live peacefully, we generate a much more peaceful environment for those around us and the offspring of our society to thrive and dwell in. And with that, I'll leave you with these waves that I watched for far too long, just lapping on the shore Waves that crashed many ships before my time. Waves that brought in fish for the community. Waves that carried ships out to sea. And waves that helped explorers discover and rediscover this wonderful place. Thanks for watching. And if art is your thing, stay tuned for that video I'll post later this week as I'm trying some new art things out. Bye.